Hi, uh, this morning I want to talk to you about setting up your uh, German-made pendulum regulated mantle clock. And with these little clocks, um, the most important thing to remember is location. Uh, location and winding are the two most important aspects of setting up and running your clock. Uh, location is, uh, for these types of clocks, uh, you really need to have some place that's absolutely level, front to back and side to side, and absolutely solid. So any type of vibration will change the swinging of the pendulum, and that'll change whether or not the clock runs properly, keeps time. So uh, absolute, absolutely solid, such as in a mantle, or if you don't have a fireplace mantle, then a shelf of its own would work as well someplace where it gets uh, no vibration. So stay away from things like china cabinets, buffets, anything with doors or drawers is absolutely out of the question. Uh, no pianos, no things like that. Um, so once you've chosen a proper location for it, uh, the first thing you're going to do is put the pendulum on it. And right now for transport, we have the pendulum off of the clock and the clock is running very quickly without any, any means of uh, regulating it. So we're going to hook the pendulum on very carefully. I uh, want to make sure that we don't disturb the uh, part that comes out of the clock itself when you're setting it up. So once the pendulum is on, the clock becomes very, very fragile. You can't just lift it up and move it around once the, clock, once the pendulum is on there. So the method to get it onto the shelf or onto a mantle at this point is just going to be a matter of closing up the door, leaning the clock forward so that the pendulum rests against the back of the mechanism and then carefully picking it up and putting it in place where you want the clock to go. Once the clock is in place then it's a matter of either listening to it to see if it's already started running or to give it a little bit of a start by simply giving it a little bit of a shift like this on, on the surface and that's enough usually to get the clock ticking. So ticking, ticking has to be very even and not out, what we call out of beat. Um, so if you listen to the clock very carefully at this point, it should be a nice even cadence to it. Tick, 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 tick. If the clock isn't doing that, then you want to make sure that your, that your surface is level. If you can't find a level surface, then you may have to shim one side or the other of the clock slightly to make the clock actually tick properly. You can experiment with that a little bit by listening to it when you lift it and just hearing the way that it changes the sound. So once the clock is running and ticking and everything is good, you've got it in its location where it's going to be um, running constantly, then what you want to do is make sure that you know and understand how to wind the clock and set it. Winding is uh, done once a week on this type of a clock. So typically I recommend picking a time or a day of the week that uh, works best for you that you'll remember to be able to wind it regularly. Um, and winding should be done fully every week and the time should be reset every time that you wind it. So when I talk about winding the clock fully, what I'm talking about is actually winding it until it comes to an absolute stop on the line. I'm just going to show you how that's done. Put the key in and then you turn it until you cannot turn it any further. Just like that, it should actually come to a rebound position. There's no such thing as overwinding the clock. There's no such thing as winding it too tight. And it's very important that you understand that. There's no, uh, no harm that can be done to the clock by winding it fully. Uh, the only harm that you could do possibly would be to break the key. So I'm gonna wind up all three of these right now just to show you how they're all done. Each one has to be fully wound on the clock. You cannot leave one not running, one part of it not running. Once the clock is wound and you make sure that it's still running properly, then you set it on the right time. Setting it on the time is simply a matter of turning the hands forwards until you get to the right time. If you do have to back up the hands on this type of a clock, you can go backwards. Uh, the rule of thumb is with any clock is if you feel a strong resistance, whether you're turning it forwards or backwards, you should always and go the opposite way and let it continue chiming or striking, doing whatever it wants to do. So if I'm turning the hands backwards and it jams up, then you want to go forwards with it. Now with this type of clock, uh, it has what's called a self-correcting mechanism in it. Uh, and so what happens is if the clock gets out of sync, like it is now for example, it will recorrect itself on the next full hour. So what will happen is it will not chime until it gets up to the proper Hour, until it gets up to the hour. So there's no way to get this clock out of sync. Um, you can reset the time forwards or backwards without having to stop every quarter hour. Uh, you should stop at the very least at the 12 o'clock position when both the hands are at the 12. 
and, that, and then, uh, so if, for example, if I was setting it at 3 o'clock now, basically what I would do is I would go ahead until 12 o'clock, stop and let it chime, and then I would, once it's finished chiming, I would set it at the proper time, and then on the next hour it will correct itself properly, okay? So example, for example, if I'm setting it at 3, just go like this, stop at 12, let it finish chiming, it may not be synchronized properly, then go to the proper time. So, okay. And of course that gets the clock out of sync and then what happens is at 4 o'clock it'll be back in sync again. Okay. So the other thing I want to talk to you about is uh, regulating it, but this is something that's very important. First of all, before I go on to the next part of it, whenever you wind the clock, make sure that you set it on time. Accuracy on these clocks is basically about a minute a day. So therefore, over the course of a week, it may be out several minutes. You can't, so if the clock has gained a few minutes, wind it up, set it back to the proper time. If it's lost, if it's lost a few minutes, wind it up, set it ahead to the right time. Okay? But always, always, always set it on time because you don't want to accumulate a loss or a gain. Okay, um, so what else do we got to talk about? Set, so regulating on this type of a clock is basically uh, done by means of shortening or lengthening the pendulum. This is all done as part of the servicing for you, so you shouldn't have to worry about this. But you do need to be aware of it just in case this little nut has got turned in transport or something like that. So uh, making the, the pendulum shorter or raising the bob on the pendulum makes the clock run faster. And making it lower is slower. If you can just remember lower is slower, that's all you need to know. But I don't recommend that you play with this unless it's something that's absolutely necessary. Regulating once the clock is serviced shouldn't have to be done again until the clock is serviced again next time. So, and speaking of servicing next time, that'll be probably in about five years. Uh, we do warranty them for two years, but we do recommend that you service them about every five. The oil only lasts for about four or five years on a clock, so five years is a good maintenance uh, schedule.